Good morning, good evening, depending on, um, good afternoon, depending on where, where you happen to be located. This is a seven-part series uh, as a kind of um, introduction overview of artificial intelligence art um, and, and the concept of modeling and how that connects to AI and art. Uh, it's part zero uh, because I actually had started part one and realized, wait, I need to put more background information in here. Uh, you'll sometimes see this on the cover, the, the cover slides on each of the seven decks. Uh, this photograph uh, does not exist. So it just means that I created this um, as an example, as a sort of curated human, myself, you know, curated example of, of AI art. So I used some of the tools that are, that are available to me. Let's begin with some definitions. AI is a computer system. A system is some combination of hardware and software, okay? To perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence. So that's what AI is. Machine learning, which is kind of what we're gonna be talking about in terms of its effects on design and the arts, is a part of AI. Now other parts of AI are knowledge representation. That's a huge part of AI. Um, but that is not part of machine learning. And so, and, and there are other things, of course, within, within AI, uh, the study of logic, propositional predicate, and so on, that are um, part of AI proper, but uh, they're, they're, they're not in ML or, or machine learning. In machine learning, our key is to learn and adapt, which is kind of a, involves a feedback loop. It's just like we do when we learn something. It kind of involves feedback loops with the environment and with people that we talk to. A model in the context of the, this series is an artifact that is a simplified representation of or for something. So an example of of is I've got a yellow tennis ball and I say, that tennis ball is a model of the sun. Well, you could argue that's kind of a very simple shape-based ge geometrical model, um, but still, it's, it's, it's an accurate statement, I think. Whereas if you go to, you're searching for an apartment, you're searching for a house, uh, maybe you're redesigning your kitchen. Uh, a model kitchen is something that is made as a prototype, is kind of is prototypical because it has a, um, a manifest connection to all the possible kitchens and organizations and layouts that are possible. So modeling has this sort of, uh, there's just two ways it's, it's used. It's used in the of and it's used in the for sense. Now art, I would say, always begins in the imagination and that ties it to an area of philosophy called aesthetics. And I always like to think of art in, in this way because it begins, it, it's about imagining things. It's about creatively imagining uh, different possibilities, which then ultimately get made or drawn or painted or, or uh, fabricated. And of course, art is all about the sublime, which is a, a, a component within aesthetics. When we begin our journey in machine learning, and you know, we're talking about neural networks. And the thing to get out of this is that this is kind of a function. It's actually a comp composite function. So F and G are you know, functions, and then you combine them together, get a bigger function. And it's got a bunch of inputs. And it's got a bunch of, it's got some outputs. Now, this is a very extremely simplified version of the biological neuron. Uh, and yet, this was kind of like one of the first mathematical neurons in the, in the 40s that was proposed by McCulloch and Pitts. And the other th key thing, and this is, I can't sort of overemphasize this, is you, when, if you program, like in Python or JavaScript, for example, you're generally thinking in terms of control flow, the flow of control do this, do this, do this, do this, right? It's natural. And of course, you have branching occurring because there's conditionals. You store stuff in arrays and variables. 
Um, but it's, it's a flow of control. This is very different. We're talking about a machine learning is quite different. The, whole the, the metaphor is different. It's data flow. So what flows into these, into these functions are data, which are then produce output. So if you think of functional programming, you're very close because functional programming, as its sort of metaphor, uses the idea of data flow, right? Uh, so that's important when recognizing machine learning. This is a, a neural net that you could think about this as being, you know, beyond the McCullough Pitts neuron before the, you know, going beyond the perceptron, which is another component within the history of neural networks. And, you know, you've got an input layer, a hidden or latent layer, and you have an output layer and you have these biases, which are kind of additive numbers uh, to say a multiplicative term. And the thing to kind of get away from this is, okay, a couple of things. One is it says fully connected. What does that mean? It just means that each neuron here is connected to every neuron in the next layer. So that's what a fully connected means. And in the bigger sense, this is really just a gigantic function, F, right? It's a, it's a big function. Um, and so you can see the composability and the hierarchy going on um, in, in saying, you know, this is really just a box that itself has inputs and outputs. And so we use that, I'm not going to go into this in any great detail other than to say this is a model or sometimes called an architecture for a type of um, machine learning neural network. And you're looking at the higher levels of that model. Like, you remember I talked about fully connected? Well, you don't actually visualize it in this architectural diagram. You just say FC. And you know that if you zoom in with your microscope on an FC, you'll find a fully connected um, pair of layers, right? And so um, that's kind of what this, this chain is, is meant to represent. And the other things you can kind of look up if you want to dive down into the, uh, the rabbit hole, the deep recesses of machine learning and how, how, how it works. But um, think about data flow. This is involves data flow. And it's a higher level than you know, we saw in the, the, the explicit pictures of neurons. This is part of a family of models which is very popular. In, the, uh, in design and in art called GANs, or Generative Adversarial Networks. So Style GAN in particular, which is promoted by a company that you may have heard of, NVIDIA. They are pretty much, I would say, the major company on the planet making hardware to make all of this stuff happen. There are other people that make chips, semiconductors, and hardware, but I'd say NVIDIA owns most of that market right now. So where we're going to begin is in the imagination. You know, I said, well, art really is about the uh, sublime, you know, just finding fascination in the sunset and just looking at it, you know. Uh, for example, <clears throat> we're going to start with a holodeck. So what is a holodeck? A holodeck is something that occurred in Star Trek Next Generation. That's where it mostly was featured in the beginning. And in the holodeck, you can kind of do anything you want. You can just say, create a very green forest with ferns, trees, and uh, a sky with uh, so puffy white clouds. And you might even say, dress me in a particular way, although this is the Star Trek uh, uniform. And so it's kind of, you know, the extent of our, of our science fiction future. Right, it's like we're kind of moving in this general direction. And this is just a more explicit sort of view of how the holodeck works, right? It's a, you've got a grid at the very bottom here. You've got two actors that have stepped into this three-dimensional space. And then as they tell the computer wh where they want to be, um, then the space actually recreates a simulation, which puts them in this particular case in, in what appears to be a conference um, area, right? 
So part of the holodeck features is it's part of Star Trek. Uh, you can tell the computer, ask the computer to perform any task. Examples of tasks are create people, create, say, um, a forest or uh, an old uh, 19th century Western mining town. You can pretty much uh, ask it to do anything you want. And you can, it's, it's, uh, it uses, you can specify styles. This is important because this is something that carries, this is associated with uh, design and, and, and art in terms of machine learning. You'll see this term in other places. So in, in many ways, you know, the AI art scene and, and the movement, uh, especially with the dramatic explosion in 2021 of, of tools and, and, and notebooks and so on, it brings us closer to the, uh, the, the holodeck reality uh, we have no idea how you know if the holodeck will ever really exist, but things along the way bring us closer. So I might say to a computer, you know, create a scene with a river, blue sky, and mountains in the background, and a person in the foreground wearing a tri-cornered hat, you know, like they wore in the in the 18th century. So I can do that, and what's interesting is that this is the kind of thing you can do now. And that's, that's what I mean about AI art brings us closer to the holodeck, is that, um, you know, five, ten years ago, you, you could not even imagine uh, really being able to pull this off. But there are many pieces of software that you can play with that get us closer. Um, human, humans are in control. That You know, the, the machines aren't out to replace the humans. At least that's the, that's the goal. Um, However, from, his, from history, we know that that's happened. Uh, and generally, what's happened is people work in another area, right? They get a new job or they get reskilled. Um, but the, the key point here is that humans are in control of creative production. You are, as an artist or a designer, you're already in control of this. And the computers are, are tools. Right, so machine learning is a tool that you should think about in your creative process. And in that creative process, there are four modalities or media types that seem to be very prominent within the machine learning arts scene. Uh, you've got text, image, video, audio, and you can kind of move between them. Right, so this these arrows right here this is kind of what you're getting with machine learning art you're getting the ability to uh, more easily make these bridges between media types and that ease is kind of represented here by bolder arrows right you can more easily go between text and image and a keynote is that you know humans have been doing this for millennia Right, so this has always existed in the human space. What machine learning uh, provides us is with a set of extra tools to make this easier and, if you will, kind of democratize, make it so that more people can be designers and more people can be artists. So that's a good thing because I think it promotes design and art. And uh, the term labor here, I think what I, what I mean by this is that it doesn't take you as much time. All technologies beginning with the invention of fire and, you know, the bow and arrow and the spear and, and so forth. Um, these help us in some way. I mean, that's the idea. They, they make it so that our labor is, is, is less and that's kind of the role uh, for for the you know the longest time humans have been joined at the hip with technology and uh, of course since the 1940s we've been joined at the hip with digital technology and the idea is that it makes things easier for us so you have you have a workflow right now in doing design and art this is just an example of uh, a simple workflow where you may begin with a text prompt and you may turn some knobs make some controls. These are often called hyperparameters. So you modify the hyperparameters and you give it a text prompt 
uh, which in effect is kind of a hyperparameter, and you go into this GPT. This is a class of machine learning models that works with text. So we begin with a prompt, and then it com the GPT completes that prompt, and then we may do a selection of that larger text, the amount of text, and produce a summary. So these are just functional blocks. They, they take as input, they produce output. It is a data flow diagram. And you know you have to sort of think about if you had to map out your current workflow, your artistic creative production, uh, you, you may do something like that, depending about like this. Uh, you may not always like put boxes around it and so on, but um, this is just to show you the potential and to point out that machine learning is just part of the process. Like here, I'm getting the text summary, but I'm using that as a, a, a way to create an image, synthesize an image. So an image comes out of this. Text goes in, image comes out. And the image can be post-processed by Photoshop, for example, or GIMP, um, or one of many other tools. And so you have to think of the tools you're already using now as being part of this. This is just another set of tools that will help you be creative. And this is way too long to read or go over. What I want you to get out of this is that in bold text, that is what I entered into the machine, into this program called GPT Neo. I had my sword and found myself in a dark crypt. Now, the emphasis that I gave verbally, of course, that's, that's not, um, unfortunately, part of this particular process. It just takes the, the English, and then it com the machine completes with everything else. So everything else you see in non-bold was created by GPT-NEO. So this is just a, a kind of macro example. If you want to read the entire script, uh, you know, use the PowerPoint, which is available, and go through it. But um, prompt goes in, in bold. Text, which is more lengthy, comes out. And this is often called a completion. Okay, one thing I will recommend, uh, there's, a, there's a ton of really good resources on the internet. Uh, you may want to look at, for, for in terms of high level, approachable things, as opposed to you know detailed technical papers with lots of linear algebra and mathematics, um, I look at this. I recommend this uh, series by Baxi T. Future, and if you click on this, it will take you to YouTube, and um, I think he's got almost like 20 videos on the multimodal. And multimodal, remember this as being kind of like the diagrams that I showed, where we had text, image, video, and audio is the ability to bridge those. That's what multimodality means. And it's what machine learning art facilitates. Uh, there's also a good blog that I, I read yesterday, so I'm putting a link to that here, and you can, you can look at that.